Today I'm gonna make my own cheese, starting with fresh mozzarella like what's used on Neapolitan style pizza, but I'm also gonna attempt a more low moisture version like what's used on pretty much all other styles of pizza, at least here in the US. And making fresh mozzarella is pretty easy in theory. It can be done in less than an hour with just three or four ingredients. But as I started my usual research on YouTube, I noticed that nearly every recipe I found was slightly different from the last. And I'm not the type of person to just blindly pick a recipe and follow it, so this meant that I had to start from the beginning to figure out what cheese actually is and understand at least the basic science behind how it's made. Which led me to this book, Mastering Basic Cheese Making by Gianna Clee Caldwell. It explains everything you need to know to get started in cheese making and it has recipes for pretty much all the basic cheeses that we know. Ricotta, mascarpone, paneer, feta, and so on. But the one we're concerned with today is mozzarella. And like I said, this book has helped me to understand the fundamentals of cheese making. In its simplest form, cheese is just milk that's first been soured either through fermentation fermentation or the addition of an acid, then coagulated in order to isolate the proteins and fats of the milk, or in other words, to drive off some of the moisture from it. It's then salted for flavor and or preservation, and sometimes the cheese is further aged to remove more moisture and to develop some different flavors, which is actually a pretty simple process when you break it down. And making mozzarella is probably one of the easiest ways to demonstrate it, so let's give it a try. And step one is to sour our milk. So by the way, regular grocery store milk works fine. It can be pasteurized just as long as it's not ultra pasteurized. You do want to use whole milk if you can for the best flavor though. So I'm going to use about two quarts here, which is a half a gallon. Now I mentioned that this souring can be done via fermentation and that's how it's typically done in a commercial setting. Either a powdered culture would be added to the milk or a sample from the previous day's batch would be added sort of as like a starter to get the fermentation going. However, there is a simpler solution, which is just to add a little bit of acid to your milk in order to bring down the pH. But this is where it got a little confusing when I was watching some video tutorials because everyone was using a different form of acid. Some people would use vinegar, some would use lemon juice, some would use citric acid. And it wasn't until I started reading this book that it made a lot more sense. As the author explains it, any edible acid can be used to make cheese, but the type of acid you use might impart a little bit of flavor into the cheese. For me though, since I want the most neutral flavor possible for this initial test, I'm just gonna use this citric acid. So I need three quarters teaspoon for this amount of milk. And I need to dissolve that in one tablespoon of water just to make sure that I can distribute it more evenly. So we'll just go ahead and add that in. And with that, step one of souring the milk is all done. And we can move on to step two, which is to coagulate the milk, which sort of has two parts to it. The first is to bring the milk to the right temperature. We just need to heat it up a little bit in this case to about 88 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. But since we need to maintain a pretty precise temperature range, I've created a little double boiler mechanism here. So I've got a nice heavy pot full of water and I'm just gonna place my plastic container into that pot so that the milk can slowly come to temperature. Heat alone though isn't gonna be enough to help this milk coagulate. So what we need is also to add something called rennet. So just like the citric acid, you can buy it online. I got mine on Amazon. It may also be available at some home brewing stores or health food stores. Okay, so the instructions say one quarter tablet sets a gallon of milk. Now we wanna stir the milk using an up and down motion. Stop stirring briefly. Pour the diluted rennet over top of the ladle. Begin stirring up and down again for 10 seconds. Hold the ladle up to the top of the milk in several spots to help still the milk. So you want to keep the milk as still as possible here. And then you want to let the curd set until a clean break is achieved, which it says should take just about five minutes. All right, so we just need to make a small cut. Lift up. Oh wow, it's a very clean cut. I think we're ready to go ahead and cut this curd. Now one thing I noticed was that my temperature carried up to about 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Hopefully that'll be okay. I mean, it looks pretty good so far, but the next step is to cut it into one quarter inch to one half inch cubes. This rectangular container makes that pretty easy. So we're gonna go ahead and cut all the way horizontally, every half inch to quarter inch. So now what we wanna do is it says heat the curds very gradually, stirring gently to 105 degrees Fahrenheit over about five to 10 minutes. Like I said, we're already at about like 109 right now. So I'm just gonna leave the heat off and just go ahead and stir these gradually for five to 10 minutes. 
All right, so it's been about seven minutes. I've kept it between about 100 and 105 degrees this whole time. So I'd say we can move on to the next step, which is to drain out the whey. So we're gonna need to heat up the whey again. So I'm gonna put it back into my pot here, which means I need to dump out the existing water and then go ahead and drain it right back off. And what we should be left with in this pot is just the whey. So technically we do have cheese here. I mean, cheese curds, but cheese either way. Obviously it doesn't quite look like the mozzarella that we all know and love though because there is one more step in order to make this a proper mozzarella and that is to stretch the curds and shape it into a mozzarella ball. So to do that we need to heat up our whey to 130 degrees Fahrenheit and we also need to add a little bit of salt here for flavor. Only one and a quarter grams is what it calls for here. I feel like I might end up preferring a little bit more but we'll just go by the book for now. Basically, again, we're just looking to warm up the whey so that we can then put some of the curd back into it to kind of soften it to make it able to be stretched and shaped. Which gives me just enough time to complete a quick Italian lesson thanks to this video sponsor, Babbel. Because if you watch this channel, you know that I'm a pretty big pizza enthusiast. I'm always working to learn and improve my skills, and someday I want to travel to Italy to learn from some of the best. But I want to be able to absorb the full essence of the craft of pizza making in its original form. Which is why I recently started learning Italian thanks to Babbel. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world, and what I love about it is that it's designed around real world conversations. The lessons which are created by actual language teachers, prepare you to have practical conversations about things like travel, business, and more. Basically stuff that you'll actually use. And what I really love is that at the end of each lesson, after you've been introduced to some new vocabulary and grammar, you get to see the language in action through a real world conversation. Because of course it's super important to see and understand how the language is actually used. Di dove sei? Di dove sei? Sono di Palermo. Sono di Palermo. Which is also why I love Babbel's Italian podcasts, which feature native speakers discussing a wide variety of different topics. And with the included transcripts, I'm able to follow along to better pick up on the language. And right now, you can get 60% off your Babbel subscription using the link in my description below. So, grazie a Babbel for sponsoring this video, and grazie a te for your support. Now, let's go see how my mozzarella is doing. So we're at 130 degrees right now. It says add just a little bit of my curd and we'll just let that warm up for a little bit. So we're gonna try to kind of stretch this out. It's definitely stretching a little bit. It's as if it's not stretching easily though to bump up the temperature another 10 degrees. We'll go up to like 140. Starting to stretch, definitely starting to stretch. I think part of it's you just need to give the curd time to, to soften up in that liquid. But I would also say using a slightly higher temperature is probably a good idea. Yeah, I think I might've overworked this a little bit just cause I was messing around with it, but looks pretty good. I think I can go ahead and move on to the rest of my mozzarella. Let's go ahead and drop her in. Give it maybe one to two to three minutes. Give it another try here. Stretching a little bit. Again, I think it just needs more temperature. I'm gonna bump up the heat just a little bit more. Maybe try to get it to like 150 degrees. There we go, now it's stretching. Wow. Add it to my cold water, and we got our mozzarella. Obviously what I'm very curious about though, is to see how they taste. So for the sake of comparison, I also got some store-bought mozzarella. This is Bel Gioioso brand, the one I typically buy. So I wanna see if my homemade stuff actually tastes any better. Texturally, mine's definitely a bit softer. I don't know if it's a lower moisture content or what, but let's cut into mine and see what it looks like. I mean, it looks like you would expect. Store-bought means good. A little bit salty, but overall, I mean, not really too much flavor to it. Let's try my homemade stuff. Definitely needs a lot more salt. Next time I'd probably add salt directly to the curd. I don't know if that would have any other negative impacts, but otherwise, I mean, the flavor is quite a bit different. This has a lot, I mean, for lack of a better term, fresher, more cheesy flavor to it. Where, like I said, the store-bought one just really doesn't taste like anything. The true test though, and really the whole reason that I did this in the first place, was to see how it melts on a pizza. And I just so happen to have a couple doughs ready to go, so let's give it a try. All right, so I've got my store-bought cheese right here. My fresh cheese is 
still in the oven, but I want to cut into this before it cools down too much. Visually though, I mean, it looks really good. I was aiming for sort of a Neapolitan style pizza, of course, given that we're using fresh mozzarella. So I baked at my oven's highest possible temperature on my baking steel for about two minutes. And then I moved it up to the very top rack and broiled it for the last minute. So only a three minute total bake. And you can see the cheese didn't really brown too much. It just sort of melted nicely, which is exactly what you want with a Neapolitan style pizza. Pretty much exactly what I would expect. Like I said, the cheese melted nicely without browning or burning too much. I mean, you can tell that it was baked in a home oven. It's not gonna be as soft and gooey as it should be if we were to bake in a proper, you know, wood-fired oven, but pretty much as close as we're gonna get at home. Now, I think my other pizza is ready. Looks very interesting here. You can see the cheese didn't really melt and become gooey the way that it should. Browned a little bit. You know, it's got some stretchiness to it, but not exactly what I would hope for. So flavor-wise, it tastes pretty much the same as it did raw. Weirdly, the texture is almost the same too. It didn't really melt or do anything. It kind of just browned a little bit on the top, maybe dried out just slightly, but definitely wasn't exactly the result that I was hoping for. I mean, it was my first attempt ever at making cheese, so I can't complain too much. I'm sure there's some things that I could do better. The problem is just that I don't know exactly what I need to fix in order to improve that issue. But let me do a little bit more research and see if I can't figure it out. So I dove back into my book and sure enough, there was a little troubleshooting section that seemed to address the exact issue I was having. Ah, here we go. So it says the curd stretched well, but the end result is rubbery and bouncy. Sounds like the result that I was having. That means the curd is overstretched, overworked or overheated. Because basically in our cheese, we've got proteins, fat, and then the liquid, which is also known as whey. And the whole goal of this process of cutting and draining the curds is to get rid of just the whey. But if you heat the cheese a little bit too much, which I think I probably did, you can also melt some of the fat out of it. And if you're not quite gentle enough with it, which I probably wasn't either, you can also squeeze out that butter fat. And so I think that to achieve that really nice melty gooey result, we need as much of the fat to stay in the cheese as possible. And based on this, I think I have a couple ideas for how I can do that. So this time I made sure to keep the milk temperature below 90 degrees throughout the entire initial heating phase. And by the time I cut the curds, everything seemed to be going well. From here, I made sure to only stir very minimally and very gently as I heated the curds up to 105 degrees, like the book instructs. And when I went to strain off the curds, I could already tell they were so much richer and softer than before, which was a really good sign. So I heated up the whey and this time gently stretched out my cheese, handling it as little as possible. And when I cut into the finished product, sure enough it was super milky and rich but there was still one thing left to do bake a pizza with it and you can see this one looks quite a bit more promising than the other it got super creamy and gooey as it melted the cheese kind of blended in with the sauce i think the key is really just using that lower temperature to prevent too much fat from melting out and then being very gentle with it during the mixing and stretching again to prevent that fat from being released so before this cools down too much though let's cut into it and give it a try Wow, so that's kind of different than anything I've ever had before. I will say I do think there's a little bit too much moisture left in the cheese. What I'm kind of noticing is rather than staying sort of gooey and stringy, the cheese kind of separated and got a little gritty. Now part of that might have been just because of the home oven. For a Neapolitan style pizza, I'm baking for a little bit longer and at a lower temperature than I should be. But I'm still pretty impressed that I was able to achieve such a creamy, fatty cheese. Honestly, what it reminds me most of is when I've had a pizza with buffalo milk mozzarella, which is is just super fatty and rich. It's kind of the closest I've had to that. I thought my conclusion was gonna be that it wasn't worth doing at home, but honestly, I think it kind of is. I mean, with a little bit of tweaking, you can make a really, really good pizza cheese at home. And it's actually a lot quicker and easier than I thought it would be. So I'd really recommend any of you out there to give it a try as well. For now, I have one other mission because as most of you know, if you've watched this channel, while I do like and appreciate Neapolitan style pizza, my true love is New York style pizza. And for that, we're gonna need a slightly different type of mozzarella. New York traditionally you're looking at a low moisture mozzarella. Rated low moisture mozzarella. Low moisture mozzarella. Low moisture mozzarella. Sometimes simply referred to as pizza cheese because it's the primary cheese that most pizzerias use, at least here in the US. As the name implies, it's basically just a lower moisture version of this fresh mozzarella that we've made today. It was primarily created because the lower moisture content prevents it from spoiling as quickly, but it also has a few advantages when it comes to making pizza. The first is that it prevents the pizza from becoming soft 
soggy because it has less moisture. And that lower moisture content also helps the cheese to melt a lot more nicely and to stay gooey and melted much longer than fresh mozzarella. Which means that this low moisture mozzarella can withstand the longer bake times at slightly lower temperatures that most American pizza styles require. So personally, I'm very comfortable baking with this type of cheese, as most of you probably are too if you bake pizza at home. But as I started looking into how to make it, I only got more and more confused. And the main problem was that I couldn't find a single video, recipe, or article online explaining in any level of detail how it's made. I was able to piece together a little theory though, because this stuff is known by a couple names. Some call it low moisture mozzarella, some call it traditional mozzarella, and some call it aged mozzarella. Which led me to believe that maybe it's made by just taking something like fresh mozzarella and then aging it. I mean, that would seem to make sense since it would dry out the cheese a little bit, making it low moisture. However, this is a cheese known as scamorza, which is basically made by taking fresh mozzarella and then hanging it up for a few weeks to eight. But this isn't low moisture mozzarella. It's something completely different, which means that calling this low moisture mozzarella aged mozzarella is probably not 100% accurate. Instead, I think it's basically made the same way as a fresh mozzarella, but during the process of cutting and draining the curds, you just squeeze more of the whey out, which leads to a lower moisture cheese. And since I couldn't find a recipe for it, I guess the only way to find out is to give it a try. So here's where the first difference in the process comes in. Based on some forums I read online, some people said that if you wanna drain off more of the whey, you should basically cut the curd a little bit more finely. So I'm gonna cut maybe eighth inch to quarter inch cubes as opposed to the quarter inch to half inch that I was doing before. Then we'll just heat this up gradually. So being very gentle with the curds, looking for it to reach about 100 to 105 degrees. And once it does, we can drain the curd. Just gently use our spatula to sort of squeeze off as much whey as we can. Now I'm also gonna add my salt directly to the curd here, just to make sure that my cheese ends up well seasoned. All right, so I think we're getting pretty close to the ideal moisture level here. Just sort of waiting for my whey to heat up, and then we'll try stretching this stuff out. I feel like I might be overworking this here, but I don't know how else to do it to get all this liquid out. Moment of truth here, so toss this stuff in, see if we can't stretch it out. And it's looking pretty decent, actually. But again, I wanna avoid overworking it, but that's starting to look a little bit more like a low moisture mozzarella, if, I, if I'm being honest. Now what I'm gonna do this time is toss it back into my strainer so that I can kind of press it down, almost mold it a little bit into a shape. And I've got some ice water in that bowl to cool it down. So it did seem like I needed a slightly higher temperature to get the cheese to kind of melt to the point that I could stretch it. So that might, that's something to note for the next time I try to make this low moisture version. Now we just gotta wait for this to cool down and we'll give it a try. All right, so this cheese has been cooling for about 10 minutes and I'm ready to do some investigation here. First thing I wanna know is what was my yield here? So again, I used a half gallon of milk, which resulted in 196 grams or about seven ounces of low moisture cheese. But point is per gallon of milk, that would be about 13 to 14 ounces. Now I've also got some store-bought low moisture mozzarella here for comparison. Obviously right off the bat, you can tell mine is quite a bit low lighter in color. Could be due to the type of milk used, but a darker color also can indicate some aging. Texture wise, mine does seem a little moister than the store-bought, but I'm really curious to give this a try. So let's see what we're working with. Store-bought, just kind of set my baseline. Let's give mine a try. So flavor wise, it does still need more salt, but the texture is not bad. It does seem like I got rid of a lot of the moisture here. I will say it's kind of got stringy layers to it more so than I would want. I think if I would have known, I maybe would have used a higher temperature to stretch the cheese out at the end. And then I could have kind of formed it into a more cohesive shape, especially with like a proper cheese mold or something like that. Otherwise I'm pretty impressed with the texture. It maybe does have a slight graininess to it. So I'm interested if that's gonna mean that it's gonna separate again in the oven, but we won't know if for sure until we bake a pizza with it. All right, here, 
so my pizza didn't turn out exactly as I hoped that it would. Now, I don't want to judge it too early, but visually you can tell there's a pretty big difference here. The store-bought mozzarella melted super nicely, kind of got, looks to be pretty kind of gooey and melty. Whereas mine sort of did what that initial fresh mozzarella I made did, which was that it didn't really melt and become nice and gooey and creamy. It just sort of browned and didn't really do much else. So let's give them a try, starting with the store-bought. I mean, it's what I know and love. Nice and gooey, melty, no complaints there. So let's give mine a try. So it's really not as bad as I thought it would be based on the visuals. It does have a little bit of stretch to it and there's nothing wrong with the flavor. I just wish it was a little richer and creamier. It does seem like what happened here is that I squeezed out too much of the fat again because it seems just like a very protein rich cheese. Texture at parts is almost kind of like a ricotta or cottage cheese. So I definitely need to make some tweaks to the process or the recipe in order to perfect this. And given I'm not a cheese expert, honestly, I think that would have to be an entire video series. It's gonna probably take hours and hours and numerous tests. So if you do wanna see that, let me know in the comments below. I will say though, unless I can make just an amazing low moisture mozzarella that's better than anything you can buy in the store, I don't know that it's really ever worth making it at home. If you remember, my yield here was only about 30 13 to 14 ounces of cheese per gallon of milk. And I paid about $4 for that gallon. I might be able to find it cheaper somewhere else. But the point is that's more than $4 per pound of cheese. And I can buy a really, really high quality low moisture mozzarella for cheaper than that. Speaking of cost though, if you wanna see me make an entire pizza for under $1, you can check that video out right here. Either way, thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.